All right, today we are finally getting a chance to drive the new Toyota Land Cruiser. We have a 2.4 liter turbocharged hybrid iForce Max powertrain that makes 326 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque, an eight-speed automatic, full-time four-wheel drive, a two-speed transfer case, locking center and rear differentials, and we're gonna be driving this off-road today. Before we go for a drive, let's walk you around this Land Cruiser, give you guys some of my first impressions. This is the first time I've actually seen and sat in a new Land Cruiser. Substitute Topher went to the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum and got his walk around out there. And I actually haven't seen one of these until today. So this is pretty exciting for me. This is probably a slightly different Land Cruiser spec than what we'll be driving off-road. They have a bunch of different vehicles here today. This one is painted in Heritage Blue. It looks fantastic with the white roof. We have 265 70R18 Michelin LTX trail tires on here. We're also out here at the new 4Runner launch. We're driving the Tacoma TRD Pro, driving a whole lot of different vehicles out here. I've got to say, on first impressions, this feels, on the inside, like a Land Cruiser. It looks, I love the steering wheel. I love the view out of the, the front windshield. Oh, this just kind of has a bit of a retro old school vibe from the flat dashboard to the seats. Yes, this is basically a Land Cruiser Prado. It's based on the GX. It's a similar platform to what's going to be on the 4Runner. They all share this new TNGAF platform with the Tundra, the Sequoia, uh, just a lot of the body on frame SUVs these days in Toyota's lineup. And I like what Toyota's doing here. Yes, it's maybe a little bit redundant next to the GX and next to the 4Runner, but I'm glad it exists because in its own right, it is a cool looking vehicle. You can get the new Land Cruiser with two different styles of front headlights. This more modern look here and the rounded headlamps. Let's quickly see what back seat space looks like. Nice tall roof, grab handle to get up into the cab. Feels very similar to the GX. We've got a JBL sound system. Land Cruiser badging right here. Rear climate control. Yeah, this is a cool interior. I like the brown leather on the seats. We've got lots of physical controls. Toyota is doing such a good job with their interior functionality these days. They've got all the right features, all the right buttons. The ergonomics are, everything's really well placed. I think this is gonna be a really, really nice product for someone who wants something that's comfortable but off-road capable. In spirit, this really does the Land Cruiser nameplate a service, I think. Yes, it's a little bit smaller. It's not truly the Land Cruiser that it replaces, but on first impressions, I'm really liking kind of the character that's coming through in this interior. It feels a little bit more special in here than the new GX, and I think that's an important note. Base price on this particular Land Cruiser is $61,950 with options. We've got the Land Cruiser Premium Package, that's $4,600. That includes things like the JBL Audio, the Power Moonroof, Center Console Cool Box, Head-Up Display, and then we've got 20-inch alloy wheels and then two-tone paint for $350. So for almost 70 grand, this is probably one of the more expensive Land Cruisers. It's rated for 22 miles to the gallon in the city and 25 on the highway, which is pretty impressive for an SUV like this. Let's take a look under the hood. And again, we don't want to spend too much time on this walk around. We want to get behind the wheel and see how this drives. There's that turbocharged hybrid iForce Max 2.4 liter. Again, 326 horsepower, 465 pound feet of torque. We'll see how real world fuel economy translates with this, but this might be a really nice powertrain for this. Shared, of course, with the Tacoma TRD Pro, the 4Runner. Real quick, let's take a look in the back here. No more split tailgate with the Land Cruiser. No more pull-out door like the previous generation GX. We have a slightly higher load floor here. Room for some tools, recovery equipment. And that the reason for that is because of that hybrid battery pack. No third row available on the Land Cruiser. 
The new GX and the new 4Runner both have available third rows. But a good amount of space back here and a much better loading situation than the new Toyota Sequoia, for example, which has quite a compromised rear cargo space. This is, I'm 5'10", this is coming up to about my waist height. And because it's a hybrid, you can hear it turning on and off. It's going to be interesting to test the differences between this, the GX, and the 4Runner once we get a chance to drive that. All right, well, that's a quick walk around on the new Land Cruiser. Let's go drive this off-road and see what it's capable of. We'll see you guys out on the trail. All right, we found a Toyota Land Cruiser to drive here. This one has a set of 33-inch Toyo Open Country all-terrain tires. So nice and meaty for the off-road course. Not sure what color this is, but um, it's an interesting choice. Looks like a similar type of package to the Heritage Edition that we walked you around just a few minutes ago. Let's hop inside, we'll take this for a drive. Again, first impressions with the new Toyota Land Cruiser, first time behind the wheel. Let's see how it performs off-road. We'll switch into four low. We've got locking center, rear differentials at our disposal. We've got a camera view button right here. That should probably turn off at higher speeds. Copy. Hi. How's it going? Pretty good, how are you? Good. You were here yesterday? No, first oh, okay. time on the off-road course. This looks like a four low locking diff situation. You got it, well, All right. you don't need the rear locker. Okay. So let's go to low range, you're right. in low range. Yep. Uh, but the center diff, you, you don't need it, but you could use it. We'll do it for fun. Yeah, and you're going to use the rear locker on the next obstacle. Okay. And you have to have the center locked to lock the rear. Sounds so good. Okay. You're getting set up for that. Good. Nice. Multi train select. We might even go to, uh, yep. we might do rock. Yeah, that seems appropriate. Nice. So it's about a 15, 20 minute loop. We've got about four spotters out there. It loops around this way. Okay. Uh, just take it nice and slow for me, no faster than you'd walk out here. Sounds good. Um, you got running boards, just be mindful of that. Yep. And have fun. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yep. Take it easy. I'll All show right. you the good line here. Watch that rock. There. Yep. Yeah, the camera systems in these new Toyotas are great to have. Nice. Comfy ride. Yeah, we'll do windows down for a little bit. It's a nice day some sky but because we have cameras we can see it goes a little bit to the right all right lots of warning messages here on the dashboard we've got our front sway bar disconnected nice articulation situation here and similar to what we experienced in the gx 550 everything just happens with ease here it is so nice to have all of these systems and capabilities in the new Land Cruiser. All right, rear diff is unlocking, so we can make this turn a little bit easier. We'll keep that center diff locked for that 50-50 power distribution. More articulation here and a bit of angle. Nice, look at that, ooh. <laughs> Doesn't look as impressive on camera, but that's some good angle there. First time behind the wheel of the Land Cruiser. Good approach angles, good breakover angles, nice departure here too. We've got quite a capable off-road vehicle and this four-cylinder, really smooth at low speeds. Nice and torquey with that turbo hybrid powertrain component. Again, 326 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque. It boogies. More articulation here. This Land Cruiser just kind of takes what capability the GX Overtrail has and ramps it up a little bit. Has the rear locker standard, which is great. 
Ride quality is really nice. Pretty bumpy section of road here. And this is just getting through it with ease. I could do without the constant warning messages on the dash, but that's okay. And I like how the camera will automatically enable at speeds below seven or eight miles an hour. I wish it stayed on until about 10 miles an hour, so it would be nice just to have that in case if you're in a rush. All right, so we've got another rock crawl situation up here. Honestly, looks pretty tame. Why don't we engage crawl control for this? Why not? So we're gonna go on level two. Set us off here. And just kind of thread the needle between these rocks. And you can hear how smooth this system is. It really does a nice job. It's hit a bit of a bump here, figures it out, and takes us through. You can power through crawl control, which is very easy. Just tap the accelerator. Low range, right? Yeah, low range, yep. And then you can hit the brakes or let it re-engage here through this mud puddle. We're just gonna hit tap the brakes and let it disengage. All right, cool. Bit of a waiting scenario here. We're actually gonna turn off crawl. Just prat tap the button. Howdy. Howdy, man. <laughs> Loving these cameras. I like the weight of the steering. This first impressions, this Land Cruiser just drives awesome. It's the right size, it's not too big. Yes, this isn't the Land Cruiser as we've gotten to know it over the last couple generations. It's more related to the Land Cruiser Prado, which is the baby Land Cruiser or the GX, but it's the right size. It gets through this stuff with ease and has all the systems to do it. Wonderful. Yeah, just the ride quality of these new these new vehicles on this TNGAF platform. Uh, ride quality is just awesome. And we're back. Cool, let's do one more loop. We will connect the front sway bar and see how that changes everything. And maybe we won't lock the rear diff. We'll just let the systems work for us. I'm back. Different settings. All right. All right, so feeling a lot more body lean with that sway bar, that front sway bar reconnected. Probably getting some wheels lifting off the ground here. And no rear diff lock. So let's see how A-Track handles it. Oh, that's easy. That is easy. You can hear the systems working. You can feel a little bit of action going on between the brakes and the wheels, but very little drama. One more time here. <laughs> About 29 degrees of roll. 
it is. Just power through. And it even shows you what wheels are losing traction down there in this little off-road display. That's awesome. So in MTS, multi-terrain select, rock should have the most aggressive wheel lockup if there's a wheel up in the air. And it's amazing how much of a difference that sway bar disconnect makes in situations like this. All right, so here's a good test of approach angle. Pretty big bump down there. No scraping on departure either. Nice. Got to stay ahead of our dust trail here. I could just roll up the window. All right, so we didn't have any problems coming up with sway bar disconnect on this. I don't think we'll have any problems right now. We'll maintain our speed. So I haven't driven this yet on the road. I don't know if I will get a chance to at this event. This is primarily an off-road course for the new Land Cruisers. We'll get a press car at some point this spring to drive out on our regular test loop. And I might be able to sneak one out towards the end of the day, we'll see. But this really seems like a nice balanced package. It's cool, it looks cool inside and out. There's a there's kind of this old school cool factor here that I really appreciate with the steering wheel design, the interior. It feels a little bit more upscale than the Tacoma and new 4Runner. So I think they've got a, a good thing going on here with the new Land Cruiser. It sits on its own in this good space. We've got physical controls for everything, unlike the GX550, which has some screen controls for climate, which I'm not too crazy about, and a really nice balanced level of power and capability from this. Honestly, this might be the one to get if you can't quite wait for the new 4Runner to come out. All right, just nice and slow through here. We're taking our time. Last time we did, we used crawl control over these rocks. And this time we're just gonna kinda inch forward using the throttle. These cameras are so easy. They make it so easy to see what's around you. And I love the placeability of this. It's just the right size. Easy. This 2.4 turbo is quiet. It's not making too much noise here. A little bit more refined and smoother than what we see in the Tacomas, which is what you'd expect at this price point and for this kind of level of vehicle. As you guys might be able to tell, I am impressed on first impressions and I'm sure it drives very well on the road too. That'll be a separate video though, if it even happens on this event. Okay guys, well, there's the new Toyota Land Cruiser off-road. Ultimately, on a course like we have today, I'm sure it really doesn't make that much of a difference whether you have all-terrain tires or highway terrain tires. We've got a few different models here, but very impressed with the ride quality, the off-road systems, they're quiet. Everything just kind of gets the job done in the background. And we've got a pretty cool selection of colors too with the Land Cruiser. You gotta give Toyota credit. They are giving customers cool color choices in a lot of their new vehicles these days. And you know what? We'll just leave it in four low because someone else might want to take this on the trail.
Cool. All right, guys. Well, this is the first drive in the Toyota Land Cruiser off-road. Stay tuned for some more videos on this. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Nice thing about this color is you don't really have to wash it because it's already the color of mud and dirt and silt. I really like this gray. This is this is sharp. Nice to see plastic cladding here on high impact areas, minimizing pinstriping. They've thought of stuff like that. Instead of having to buff out, you just wipe it off and you're you're clean, you're clear. And they've cut this front valence here just perfectly to line up with your approach angle. Round headlights look cool too. Very FJ Cruiser like. I think personally I probably prefer the flat headlight design. It looks a little bit more modern. But this thing looks great no matter how you spec it.